Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles, and Vicky has learnt what her spell attack bonus is for. Yay! Yay! Yeah, well done. <laughs> That's going to be helpful. Tuna's going to be on fire today. Well, that was, what, was 16 episodes in, and we've got there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you don't do many spells, Vicky, isn't it? Oh, no. oh yeah. wait. Not a spell. Oh. <laughs> good job I'm not a sorcerer, right? <laughs> I'm David Knight, your dungeon master, and I'm joined by most of my usual players and one special guest. So say <gasps> hi, everyone. Ooh, hi. and hi. hi. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, a few quick notes before we start. First up, everyone has leveled up to level four. So congratulations, Woo. everybody. And yes, tonight we are missing our favourite bard, but we are instead joined by our first guest of the series. <gasps> so I'll just, I'll let you introduce yourself, shall I? I'll hand over to you. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Sarah Gain. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm an actor, director, producer, and someone who likes to play a bit of d so here I am. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's so exciting having you here, Sarah. <laughs> we love Sarah. So we do excited. love Sarah. <laughs> and uh, whilst we will let the, the game introduce your character, if you could just give us their name and their pronouns as well, so that we know what to use when they pop up. Okay, my character is called Deacon Fireheart Button. The pronouns are he, him. Oh my God, that's a Deacon good name. Fireheart Button. Fire Deacon Fireheart Button. Oh He's going to be Brilliant. fun. He's going to be fun. I love them already. Yeah, me too. Right, well, let's get to it so that we can meet him. Let's get on the road and cue the theme tune. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and d20 Let's play D&D &D. You'll have your character swaggers with daggers in each hand You've all discussed what you must, but even best laid plans Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blades don't fail your saves No risk too great, no choice to go This is your story No guts, no glory Confront your fate with every roll Every Inside one who will pay the price, their chance of success or rest upon the dice. No risk too great, no choice too bold. This is no small rolls. So, after fighting your way through to the divination table and stopping Kral, you all gathered yourselves to leave the Vondel's bunker. And Kidu gathered the bodies and lit a small fire of arcane books, much to Orin's dismay. Gwendolyn and Juna released Dr. Hograd from her cell and helped her grab ingredients from the surgery, and Gaius convinced Jazana and Oskin that they needed to evacuate. A night of helping the townsfolk tend to the wounded left them exhausted, and as the sun rose, Iris insisted that you all went to bed. On waking, however, you were called for an interview with arcanist Zerevir Tarek and her assistant, scholar Heron Ilwin. They were concerned with what had transpired in the town and hoped to conceal the truth of Kralovin Savelt's involvement placing any blame upon the witch in the woods. An agreement of sorts was reached, and you delivered the brewery back to Iris and made your goodbyes, only to be met by an illusion of Heron, worried about a growing conspiracy in the Arcanist's consortium, asking you to meet him at his study in the Ashwing district of Vernock Rise during the Heart of Spring festival. As you left town, Gwendolyn gained a map of the country from Drania Pine and traded her nice boots for a simpler pair and a fresh pair for Orin. Oh. Enkidu took the Artificer aside and shared some of his own history, and then you all set out on the road, heading for a new adventure. So, you've actually been travelling for about two days now. Has anything been happening in that time? Hmm. <laughs> Gwendolyn has been mulling things over, and she's getting to the point where she needs to sit and have a chat with everybody. So she's kind of been just like thinking over everything that happened at Tillisham, and she's waiting for an opportunity to talk to everyone. 
would you rather do that over a lunchtime or an evening time meal or <laughs> some other point in between? <laughs> some point when they're all sitting down and may, uh, probably an evening, like when everybody's starting to relax and mm -hmm. it's been building up on her and she's been wondering if she needs to say something or not, but she now feels like she needs to. Mm -hmm. Juna is literally just looking around for basically birds or some sort of reply from the ravens and Ruana. Mm. She's a bit distracted with that. Gilly is a bit puzzled by a cryptic message from the last conversation he had from one of his inner voices, but he's also kind of going back and forth. Did I do the right thing? They, did they have to? He's kind of back and forth about his decisions in the last fight. Not much foreign other than with all the various books that he's found in the library and places. I guess if, if when he has a bit of downtime, he'll probably just start reading up a bit about the history of Drain and things because he don't know much about it. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Like I say, it's been a few days of travel. You've passed through farmlands and they've turned to like gentle rolling hills. And occasionally there's like little pockets of villages, but there may be like four or five buildings big each as you travel along the main road following the, the path. Midday during the third day of travel is when you lose Gaius. <laughs> <laughs> That's careless of us. Yeah. Anyone seen Guy? <laughs> so <laughs> you've yours? all been taking no. it. Uh, it's like been... Bessie all over oh, again. No. Oh, well, is he on Bessie? Is he, is, she I is part of the problem, yes. Oh, dear. <gasps> so he, having, like, you've all taken turns to ride Bessie and walk alongside her. But at, at one point that he's sat on the back of Bessie, bragging about how much control he's finally gotten over the, the horse, she bolts off again with him on his back. <laughs> Oh, Bessie. Great. Yeah, he, and like you can see, like again, she's following the road, but it's not long before she is completely gone. And Gaius with her. Uh, I guess they'll meet us there then? How do you figure that? Well, otherwise they won't. <laughs> Why the hell did he, where is he? Oh, he's, she's really going for it. She's, she's yeah. very fast, yes. And he's just flailing about on the back of her. Yeah. Unless uh, we spend a really long time chasing after Guy and Bessie. We just oh, because yeah. I know that that'll shit David up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Juna, can you? Is he within range to message him and say meet us there? Yes, yes. Ha ha. I'm gonna stop being a dickhead. She, yeah, <laughs> she points to after, and I don't know whether it reaches him or not. And she says, "I'll send a bird for you." <laughs> <laughs> and she looks right are there any birds around there's not any birds nearby but you do get like the vaguest quick message back from him just being like ah, okay <laughs> oh no no you need to do Gaius's uh, voice oh what does he sound like what does he sound like like oh, I'm walking here yeah. I'm walking here alright yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay Juna <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Juna. yeah half a message because then he's out of, <laughs> out of range and he's just like <laughs> <laughs> that's just made my night as, as much as I miss Chris I did want to hear you do his voice <laughs> yeah and it'll be very fun you, to witness you. Chris hearing that impression oh of my him oh gosh <laughs> I'm so sorry Chris <laughs> but yeah so then with the four of you then left behind sort of walking along the same path trusting that you'll find Gaius again further down the road it gets to that night and you all rest up I just um I wonder if you all wouldn't mind if I um, I spoke for a little bit. Juna knows that when I was younger, I had some difficulties curbing my temper sometimes. And, and though the skills that I have uh, are one way to channel it, uh, I, I did try my best to learn how to speak things through that were worrying me, things that were weighing on my mind. Would you, would you all be open to that? Oh, certainly. Yes. Y yeah. Well, okay, so I have, uh, <laughs> I hope this doesn't seem too strange, but um, I, I have um, a, a little thing to, to help me and maybe, maybe it will all help you because it would be good to know how you're all feeling. And then Gwendolyn starts rummaging into her bag and she brings out a sock puppet. Now, this sock puppet has um, little cat ears and a little button nose um, and um, Gwendolyn puts it on and shows it to everyone. So, so this is Gubbins. Everyone, if you'd like to meet Gubbins, Gubbins, say hello. Uh, question: Have has Juna met Gubbins before, or is Gubbins new? Uh, yeah, she'll know Gubbins. Cool. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, lovely to see you, Juna. <laughs> says, says Gubbins. <laughs> um, well, my my sister Prim made this for me when I was younger, and when I couldn't talk to anybody else, I could always talk. To Gubbins. Um, so. And Keely cuts in. <laughs> the first one is always the hardest. The first what? The first person you kill. 
Well, yes. Come on, put the put the puppet down. Um. Put it down. No, no. Come on. Th- no, this is important to me. Don't just tell me to put something down that is something to help me. Please, I I need this to help me. And you can have gubbins afterwards and then you can talk. But please listen to me first. <laughs> Why don't you just talk? We're here. We're listening. We don't need the puppet. We're looking right at you. I think that we don't need the puppet, but I think Gwen I might need, need the, puppet. the puppet. Like, I just, I need some way to be able to talk. And I would really appreciate it if you just listened to me. We are listening, that's what I'm saying. No, but I just... (laughs) I'm trying to be open right now, and this is something that I do to be open. And uh, if I... if I mean, I I don't know what the point is then. I'm just trying to express myself to you all. Keep the puppet. All right, I'm sorry. All right, carry on, the puppet. I'm sorry, but I, I think sometimes people need a way to express themselves, and this is something that I find difficult, and I would like to show you all a little bit more of me. And this is a way of making sure that we don't talk over each other. And that's what I'm requesting now is that you don't talk over me and just give me an opportunity to be me without talking over me. All right, then. So um, this was something that was given to me by my sister. And it's important to me. And I feel really stupid now for sharing it, to be honest. But I'm going to anyway. Yes, it was hard. Killing somebody. And I don't know how to deal with it right now. <laughs> because all I can think of is that the Vondells, they could have been my family. And my little brother's not much older than Oskin. It's, it's all very close to home. And I don't know how to feel right now. And I'm, I'm very aware that I'm, apart from Juno, I'm with a, a group of strangers. <laughs> And I would like to get to know you all a little bit better. And I promise not to shoot you all down as soon as you try to share part of yourself. So gubbins is something that all of us can use. So if any of you need to talk, then I would like to offer gubbins if you need them. And gubbins kind of nods next to me because gubbins has been activated the whole time as the sock puppet. I'm not going to lie, I was... (laughs) I was quite scared. Not only did we kill people that I don't know if actually we should have killed them, but what we've done, we've done, and we did save a lot of people. We helped a lot of people. So uh, I'll chalk that up to experience, but I would be grateful if I if I'm to stay with you all a bit longer that we could talk things through first and decide. I mean, obviously, if, if you all want to kill lots of people, then that's fine. I, I will find somewhere else to go once we get to this town. But it, if we are to continue travelling together, then I would appreciate us talking things through and, and who we think really should be killed and who shouldn't be killed. And also, if we make a plan, I would appreciate sticking to it. And Kida, you put us in a lot of unnecessary danger by setting fire to everything. Everyone makes mistakes. I appreciate that. I've made plenty of my own. And I'm choosing to believe that you did it because you were scared. Because I think all of us ultimately are just scared. Like the Vondells, they were scared. I think if we could all learn to talk to each other a little, we've, we've known each other a few days. Obviously, me and Juno have known each other for a very long time. But the rest of us, we, we've not known each other very long. And even if it's only for another few days, it would be good to feel a bit more comfortable around people and um, and to not put each other in danger. And Gubbins nods and uh, Gwendolyn strokes Gubbins and Gubbins says, well, thank you very much for sharing that with me, Gwendolyn. Would anybody else like like Gubbins to help them talk? Uh, Juna holds up her hand. There you go, Juna. As if to say, I'll take... Orin looks very relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Juna puts Gubbins on. And sort of holds Gubbins up and does a little like she makes Gubbins look at her and look at the group. And then she sort of, (laughs) she points Gubbins at Gwen (laughs) and tries to imitate Gubbins' voice and says to Gwen, thank you very much for sharing, Gwen. That was very brave of you. Thank you, Gubbins. Sometimes we're presented with a choice that isn't a choice at all. And although you may feel like you chose to do something, 
you genuinely, we genuinely didn't have a choice. Mm. We did what we had to do for the greater good. And it might feel terrible now, but it will feel better in the future. So she takes Gubbins off, gives it back to Gwen, and she says, why don't you try your meditation? It might make you feel a bit better. Yes, I I would like to hear from everyone else. I, I think it's important we listen to each other. And she passes Gubbins to Orin. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Orin sort of looks at this sock in his hand, looks around the circle like, Juna gives him a like an enthusiastic nod towards the sock. And Kudu's looking away. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oren pulls on the sock on <laughs> his hand. <laughs> Just tell us how you're feeling about everything, Oren. I'm feeling like I've got a sock on my hand. <laughs> mm-hmm. And tell Gubbins how you feel about everything that we've been through recently. Um... Hello, Gubbins. Hello. Oh God. Um. <laughs> uh, can I can I take this sock off? Just give it a go. Uh, um. Look, if it's stopping you from saying what you really want to say, yes. then maybe you don't need the bloody sock. Take yeah, it off, I'd mate. I'd rather just not have the sock. Come I on, think. take it okay, off. Okay, well, take it off. It's fine. It's just something I need. Uh, you don't. You yeah, do what okay. you need to do. But I. I just think this is an opportunity to talk to each other. That's fine. I'd just rather not have the sock involved. Sorry. Gwendolyn takes it back. Um, look, Gwen, I hear what you're saying about the killing people thing, and I, I feel pretty awful because that dragon that I made kind of killed two people, I think, in there. Mm. And I... I didn't really, I don't know what I was thinking when I made it, but I certainly didn't think it was going to, I guess I hadn't thought it through properly, what it what it was capable of doing. And um, I don't quite know how to deal with that, I think. All I can think is that I know for certain that the Rondells we're more than capable of killing us and more than willing to do so. I know that as a cast iron fact. So, yeah, I don't know if that's an answer. And I don't, I don't know. But I know that it was a case of kill or be killed. I just think that if we find ourselves in a situation like that again, we can do better. We can maybe think about who it is that we should kill, who we shouldn't kill, and the consequences. There's certainly things that we have killed altogether, and I had no problem, but we need to make sure we we think a little bit more. Yeah. So assuming, I guess, that we all stick together, which... Yes. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's right for me to stay here anyway. I'm not sure if I'm so welcome. For now. Yeah. Enkidu? Enkidu looks at Gwen, he looks at the puppet, and he looks at Gwen, he looks at the puppet again, and he stands up. says, look, everything that needs to be said has been said. You understand what the stakes were. You know what the alternatives were. We know what the outcomes were. They were coming to kill us. We didn't go into that place necessarily to kill them. We were just going to destroy the divination table. And they chose to come after us with their weapons drawn and their magic prepared and You gave Trump a chance and he chose to put his knife in your gut. And that was a close call. I know I've not been warm to you. But no, you're good. You're a good person. And hurting people hurts you. But you gave people like that a chance and they chose to throw it back in your face. Now, I'm not saying that what lies ahead of you is murder and destruction, but consider the circumstances we're in. We're about to be potentially pulled into some kind of conspiracy surrounding the Crown City and the Consortium. And that is a dangerous place for us to be in i know so far we're just going to hear this person out and make our choices from there but if you continue down this path potentially these same choices will come upon us again where we may be asked to kill someone to protect others i know that's something for you to think about do you want to be the person who makes that sacrifice on their 
psyche to kill to protect something else that you care about. But at the same time, talking about choices again, you don't have to. You don't have to go to full loss fail. You don't have to meet this person. You don't know him. He doesn't know you. You don't owe him anything. There's no remedy to feeling better about taking someone's life. It's an awful thing. But we all make our choices. We have to stick to them. Can I ask why you put us in more danger then? What? We made a plan to make sure that we were going to search everything. I'm asking you this genuinely because I think you did it because you were scared, but why did you set a light to the study when we were all still there? We still had people to save. Why did you do it? So that this is what this is all about. No, it's one of the things it's about. Right. Okay. I'm just asking you, why did you set it to light? Tell us. We're here. We're listening. We're travelling with you. I need to know that you're somebody that we can trust. But... We had a plan, and then you went against it, and you put us all in danger. At what point did we plan to search the place after killing the Vondells? We didn't plan to we kill did. them. After we after no, but after it happened, we we put the bodies in there, and we said, okay, so we're going to search for everything. We're going to look for everything. And you said, okay, I need a moment. And we said, okay. And then the next thing we knew, that place was on fire. So tell us what was happening, because we need to know. And if it's something we can help you with, then we will. It's not something you can help me with. It's just not. Orin looks at Enkidu, just a little. I think what we all need is a little bit of closure. Then Juna holds her hands out and says, look, let's all hold hands. Oh, God. Come and hold hands. Come on. Enkidu begrudgingly, because Juna is his weak spot. He he (laughs) tentatively reaches out his hand towards Juna. Orin holds out his hands, dying inside. So Juna just sort of closes her eyes for a second and she casts Minor Illusion and around them are hundreds of magical candles. And she says, look, it's been tough for everyone, but here and now, I want us all to let go of the things that are making us feel the worst. The thing that makes me feel worst is not knowing what happened to Ruana, and I'm scared of what might happen if she's not there at the Henge. Gwen, what do you need to let go of? I worry what's going to happen to Oskin. Orin? Dunno. I'm worried about other possibilities. Great. And Kidu? I'm worried about getting dragged up in something bigger than we can handle. We're all scared. We've all got things we need to let go of. Everyone take a big deep breath in and breathe it out and let that fear go. It's no good to us anymore. She breathes in and hopes everyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> and then breathes out. And then very slowly, the candles fade. Gwendolyn just silently does the security perimeter and goes to sleep. You got any of that twain tied left, Juno? I thought you'd never ask. You wouldn't mind boiling up some water, would you? Yeah, that I can do. So, who's taking first watch? Enkidu will take first watch. He's feeling very stressed, very anxious, so he can't sleep right now. Do you want to take watch by yourself, or do you want someone to sit up with you? It's up to you. He looks a bit sheepish. I'll sit up with you, Enkidu. I'll take watch with you. I appreciate it. There's your twain tie, Dorin. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's decaf because apparently I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> there you go, Sarah. You've got to sit through our group therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> Without context, I know. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 I love the drift. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Dead people. Dead people are killing Dorin. people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Enkidu set the building on fire. Uh, Yeah, so Juno and Enkidu, whilst you're sat up, are you communicating much with each other? Are you just in your own thoughts? Juno's definitely trying to, I was going to say penetrate, but I feel like that word (laughs) carries all sorts of double entendres, like sort of penetrate the force field uh, like around Enkidu. Mm. And I think she's, she's taken the watch very much because she kind of was kind of softened him a bit earlier yeah. in the hope that she can kind of break through a bit more. So she's like open to Enkidu talking, but not pushing the, the envelope too far to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, I want a charisma check. Yeah, absolutely. Make one. Yeah. 15. Cool. What's the question that you're asking inside yourself? How much do I tell these people? Is it safe to tell them? Can I control how much I say? And really maybe to myself, as you guys share these thoughts with me, do I really know why I did what I did back there? You get the sense that Hina is smiling at your question. She says, keep your cards close to your chest as much as you like, mate, but 
You could always blame it on the other guy? <sighs> it was kind of his fault. He poked you a bit. He did. <sighs> but I know that fucking setting fire at the place ain't gonna do shit to him. I don't know. You've not tried burning him out yet, have you? No. Because I know that's gonna fucking hurt. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. And all of you lot as well. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I hope not. <laughs> oh, I, hope, I bloody hope not. Goodness me, I want to stay alive as long as I can to get you guys out. Yeah. Don't know how long it's going to take, and I just don't know anything. I'm learning new shit every day, and it's so hit and miss. And, oh, so much to get used to. We always worked good as a team. Absolutely. We're perfect. But we're not there all the time, Enkidu. No. And I miss you all more every day. I mean, I'd say I miss you back, but I kind of live in your head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clever bastard, always. <laughs> what I mean is, don't keep them at too long an arm's length. Keep them safe, but use them in the nicest way. Whilst you don't have us. All right. We won't get too jealous. Hey, <laughs> you'll be the first one to let me know, right? Oh, yeah. You think you've got control of your legs, mate? Nah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Again, you can just feel her, like, grin that she's, like, messed with you a little bit. Yeah. And she fades. <sighs> you alright, Enkidu? I think I'm a bit better. Can you keep a secret for me? Or one of two. Who, me? Yeah. Always? Yeah, first is don't let Gwendolyn know how similar Gubbins is to what I've got going on. <laughs> <laughs> don't. I, I think I would just fling myself off the Woden Isles. <laughs> What have you got going on, Enkidu? There are people inside me, in my head. Mm -hmm. Four of them are my very best friends. And one of them is the evilest fucker I know. He killed the people who raised me. And years later, when I met him again, he tried to kill me and my friends. He ambushed us with all his mates, all his men. And then something set off, some kind of magical explosion. And then my four friends and this bastard is inside my head. And you want to get him out? So badly. And I'm not sure which feelings are mine. The more I think about it with the Vondells, I won't say too much. Because there are some things that, as big-headed as it sounds, for the benefit of our little group, I should keep these a secret. But I was in a place for a certain amount of time where responsibility meant something. Mm -hmm. People looked up to the place in charge of where I was at. And things ran. They weren't perfect, but they ran. People had some sense of trust, but these, these people, they abused it. And we met the good people first, the, the cobbler, the pub owners, the, the few trustworthy members of the city guards. And, and think how many people are those and their daily lives depending on, on these people, the Vondals, and they just left them out to try. They hid underground and let them suffer, left them to their fate. And I know we already killed them. And that's... There's nothing more to be said about that, but the stuff that they had surrounded themselves with, the evil, they hugged all that knowledge and that power for themselves, and they, I just, it was just too much. So they can take all that stuff with them. I wouldn't want any of that, those writings, that, those thinkings to infect anyone else. So I burnt it, so no one else could be corrupted by the works of people like Krelevin Savelt and other people of his ilk. And there's better knowledge out there. There's better ways of using magic. Let the Vondel's evil stuff die with them. That's, that's what I was thinking. I thought I had a sense of justice. Maybe it's just chaos. I don't know. Well, it's done now, isn't it? And you understand that it was part of the process that, unfortunately, they lost their lives for a bigger purpose. Oh, absolutely. We had to stop Kral getting to that table mm. at all costs. Oh, I don't dispute that at all. They, mm. they made their choice and that this is the consequence that was coming from them. But... Enki, do I feel like I'd be keeping a secret from you that I feel like you should know if I didn't say, but that whole business with the table and the shifting realities. Oh, yeah. There was a moment where, just for a moment, I felt like I might have been you. One of these friends in your head isn't a red tiefling woman, is it? It is, actually. I just spoke with her, not that you would be able to tell. I had this experience where it felt like I was trespassing into her business but she was very pleased with me as as you <laughs> there was a charming man next to me but right it was all i felt in that moment and i felt like you should know i don't know if you can make more sense of it than me but no actually that's um, it's only right you know i remember that day very clear that's when we first met 
me and that woman. Oh, is it? Yeah. Does she have a name? Or would you rather not? No, it's fine. Speak it. She might pinch me with my own hands if if it gets a bit too much, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> her name is Hina. Hina. My brother and I, we snuck into her house of pleasure, shall we say, that she had owned. Oh. We uh, <laughs> had a few uh, operations that we wanted to run and we had our sights on this one. Maybe I'm joining hands, you know, survival. And we had snuck in, but she already knew that we were there. <laughs> she was not in the least bit surprised. I like the sounds of her already. She's a very resourceful woman. I mean, you, you have similar abilities, actually. You'd have a lot in common. I also had a similar experience when that divination table was going off. Oh, really? Yeah. I think I had a glimpse into, appropriately, Gwendolyn's past. She was in a room, obviously younger than she is now. She was booting the living shit out of a chest. Some kind yeah, of that trunk. sounds like our Gwendolyn when yeah. she was younger. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Oh, yes. With a temper. Oh, absolutely. You're kidding me. Um, Why do you think she's got Mr. Gubbins? Can both of you make constitution saving throws, please? Ah! <laughs> 18. 13. Okay, cool. So, whilst you're not poisoned... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? You do both take four points of piercing damage as uh, little bolts fly out of the... What? Out of the darkness and just embed themselves in your sides. Ah! Oh, my goodness. Shit, everyone wake up. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> We're under attack. Ah! Oh. Roll initiative. Oh. Roll initiative. I Are we going to fight Sarah? I might know who that might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarah. Sarah, have you got a crossbow bolt in your inventory? <laughs> innocent, mate, innocent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Until proven guilty, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, 25 to 20. Nope. 20 to 15. 19. 19 for Dina. 17 for Lauren. Orin, 15 to 10. 11. 14. And um, what did Deacon get? 18. 18. Ooh, one. Ooh. So, having just been shot from, from the darkness, Juna and Kidu, obviously you start waking everybody up, you jump up. Juna, it's your tempest. What are you doing? So, can, can I see anything? It's quite dark. Out in the tree line, that you can't seem to see any movement of any people. <laughs> what do I do? I have no thought time. <laughs> Come on, use those nine cantrip. <laughs> <laughs> cantrip city! I think I'm going to point my staff in the general direction that it came in Mm -hmm. and chill touch the necrotic hand out into the darkness in the hope that it it, it, hits someone. someone. Make an attack roll with disadvantage. Yeah. Gosh. A 13 and a 14. Oh, I get my attack bonus, don't I? Yes. 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 That's (laughs) your attack bonus. That's what it's for. That's Uh, what you had it. No two altogether. So as this uh, yeah, this glowing skeletal hand launches out from you, it flies through past one tree and then it does collide with somebody. And as it does, like you notice that there is a mid-height person, humanoid figure, dressed in black, mask up over their face as well. And you don't know anything beyond that. Can we see the mask? Does it look like um, Gaius's mask? <laughs> no, no, no. Like as in just like a little um, like fabric mask it. across their, their nose and mouth. We're used to seeing those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> just very kind of a medical mask. <laughs> 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 oh, At least they, they put it over their, their nose and their mouth. So that's yeah, the, yeah. it's good. But Have you outdoors, come from though? the planet Earth circa 2020? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping us safe. Make your, what, what's your damage? Um, four damage. Four points of damage. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see like sort of drain some some energy from them. Deacon, I'm going to slightly delay you coming in Please. for this first round. Thank you. Yeah, I just stay where I was anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so intrigued. So, um, it is... I'm going to jump to Orin. Orin, it's your turn. Okay. So, pulling on my goggles of night vision, looking around, do I see anything? I get a bonus action perception check. Bonus action perception check. Cool, that's a natural one. That's a natural one. There's a lot of shadows, and as you're like only just waking up, you spend a bit of time like adjusting your goggles, pulling them down over your face. Like as you scan around, you're not entirely sure what you're looking for. So you're like, trees. Uh, okay, I'm gonna just pull out my welding torch, and can I hold an action to fire it at anything that attacks any of my friends? Absolutely. Yeah, I will do that. Cool. Then it is Gwendolyn's turn. Uh, she's really out of it, waking up. She doesn't know what's going on. She's still feeling so deflated from everything 
I'm basically just going to hold my spear at the ready until something comes into sight. Cool, ready to attack in case when you see something. And I'll be aiming for legs if I am able to see anything. <laughs> cool. In which case there is, as you and Orin sort of wake up and prepare yourselves for movement, there is a brief bit of movement as a few people start edging their way into, uh, like out of the trees, into your view. So before they actually attack Orin and Gwendolyn, you have your your reactions. I said I was holding mine for if anyone attacks any of my friends. So I'm not okay, so you're gonna, gonna wait a little bit longer. do anything unless anyone attacks me. I mean, they are about to hurt you, but I'm just letting you. Okay, I mean, if you as the DM are telling me yeah, they are about to hurt me, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. They've all got they've got short bows and, and short swords and things out, and a few of them are getting ready and they're aiming and stuff. So you you, you can take your reaction now or until I've hurt someone. It's up to you. Uh, you're gonna wait till they hurt someone. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. When Delin can see that they're she's gonna aim for like somebody's chunky thigh. Cool. Make your attack roll. Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Nice. This spear goes spiraling out, hits someone in the leg, and he sort of like stumbles back a little bit. So they are going to start firing some bolts at you. And Kidu, what's your armor class? Fourteen. Fourteen. Amazing. And Orin, what's your armor class? Thirteen. Thirteen. Amazing. Both of you. It's not amazing. It's bad. It's not amazing. Can I have shield as a reaction? Yeah, absolutely. You can see two of them with uh, with these crossbows, sort of like taking aim and firing at both of you. You can do with uh, with your shields sort of flying up. It sort of is reflected off of an image of Cal. And Orin, you duck out of the way as this other bolt goes whizzing over your head. The other four are going to run in and try and stab each of you. Oh, thanks. With their with their short swords. The only one that gets anywhere close to hitting you, I'm sure, is the one that's gone for Gwendolyn. Mostly because now that it's got more spear in his leg, he's a little bit more like, okay, I know she's unarmed now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the others, the others have all like rushed in, and you've basically got this uh, like a bandit on each of you. Gwendolyn, you take four points of piercing damage mm-hmm. uh, as he sort of run in and skewered you back. Okay. Orin, if you want to yeah, set yours Can up. Can I set mine off now at the one that fired at me from a distance? Is that one still at a distance? Absolutely. There's two at a distance, four that have closed their way in. Let's, let's go towards the one that fired towards me. If I can. I don't think I probably can. Can I try and non-lethally sort of like hit it with a fireball? <laughs> probably not. Not with a fireball. No. <laughs> Didn't think so. No. Didn't think so. So that's a 15 to hit. 15 hits. Let's see if Orin can get traumatised by killing another person. <laughs> it's always with fire. 10 points of fire damage. 10 points of fire damage. Very nicely done. This little globule of fire like spurts out, flies through the crowd, catches this guy right at the back. It is Enkidu's turn. Might be a bit of a leading question. Where is the bolt stuck in me? Can I tell which direction it came from? Yes, it's sort of stuck in your right side, and there is a crossbow guy in that direction. The one that hit Juna came from the opposite direction. Okay. I know I've got good sight, but can I see the guy who hit Orin? With the crossbow bolt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same guy. Same guy. All right. I'm just going to blast him with Eldritch Blast. Amazing. Really sorry if this is your character, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> well, take it personally. There may be choices, <laughs> remember... <laughs> That's a 19 to hit. 19 hits, yep. That's five points of force damage. Five points of force damage. Lush. So this guy, the same guy that's on fire, just gets like knocked back a little bit as an Eldritch Blast fires out at him. Have you got anything else to do, Enkidu? Just to say, do I need to ask Gubbins before I kill this fucker first? (laughs) Any response from Gwendolyn in the middle of the fight? None. It is Juna's turn. Can I see the person that hit me with the bolts? Yeah, uh, and you've also got somebody stood directly in front of you as well that's just swung oh, a sword yeah. I think I probably should deal with them first, shouldn't I? Yeah, I think she's going to, with her non-staff hand, go for the scruff of the neck, like at the front. Not choking them, but holding them in that sort of place to try and mm. hold them up. Obviously, she's not very strong. She's not going to do that. And her hand turns into a very similar skeletal hand to the chill touch hand, which is just blasted across the clearing. And she will cast shocking grasp on the person in front of her. Yeah, make your attack roll. Uh, unnatural twenty to hit. We... Definitely hit. This is not just because of my attack bonus. I am genu- <laughs> genuinely rolling really well so far. <laughs> Yes, that hits. Great. Two damage. Two points of damage to the to the guy in front of you. I like the image that like your hand has almost gone skeletal because of the way that like lightning energy is like 
refracting yeah. through it, you know? Yeah, I like the idea that they match. It's like the Emperor in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this guy that I um, got by the scruff of the neck can't take reactions until the start of its next turn. Absolutely. It is then Deacon's turn. So, are any of these stood together? So there's six of them all together, is that right? Yes, there's six of them all together. There's probably, with one of the crossbow bolts toward the back, there's probably about like a five foot gap between him and somebody attacking Juno. Okay, and they're the two closest and the other ones are further off? Sort of on the other side of the circle, yeah. Uh, from where I am. <laughs> In that case, Deacon is going to jump out from behind the tree, swinging his morning star above his head and go, that wasn't very nice, smack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make an attack roll. Whoa. 16. 16 hits, yeah. Are you hitting the crossbow or the guy right up in Juna's face? Who was closest to me? The crossbow guy is probably closer, but you can get in the gap between the two of them anyway. This person get two for the price of one, can I? Is that cheating? <laughs> <laughs> can you do two attacks? In... Well, it swings round. <laughs> <laughs> I think just one for this one. Okay, but, uh... fine, fine. <laughs> Okay, the one in front of Juna then in that case. <laughs> the one in front of Juna, absolutely. Cool, uh, so yeah, that hits, roll, roll. That your... is six piercing damage. Ah, oh, amazing, amazing. Have you got a bonus action? Are you doing anything else? Well, I'm going to hold it for now. That's it for now. Okay. I'm just going to I'm gonna just give Juna a light and I'll go, you're right, love. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and as uh, Deacon <laughs> is obviously love him. <laughs> just leapt out, what does Deacon look like? So, Juna stood in front of you. There is a very gangly looking half elf. Uh, he's about 17 years old with long, Aww. matted, sort of almost dreadlocked hair that's tied back behind the back of his head. He's got big furry boots on and lots of kind of leather and stuff and a slightly oversized bag that makes him look even more gangly than he even more is. But he's got a big smile on his face and he looks like this happy. He's a full on backpacker, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he's on his scarf yard. He's hitchhiking in the forest. Scarf <laughs> yard. <laughs> Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. We hope you enjoyed listening to No Small Questions and Superfan Chats as much as we did. Fun fact, Superfan Chats was intended to be a 10-minute chat at the end of No Small Recaps. However, our superfans, Hannah and Sam, had so much to talk about that we simply had to make it a standalone show. So listen out for more Superfan Chats in the future. And as we're talking about Superfan Sam, I'm going to take this opportunity to plug his rather fabulous new business. Ooh, an advert. During the lockdown, Sam and his partner Sarah set up So Like Sarah, combining Sam's love of illustration with Sarah's seamstress skills developed over the years working as a costume maker in London's West End. So far, they have created a range of fabric designs, including spaniels, classic cars, and cartoon kitchen utensils. But now, they've created a design that's excited the entire No Small Roles team. Head to the So Like Sarah Etsy shop to check out their brand new polyhedral dice design. They've made velvet dice bags, face masks, snoods, tote bags, and there is more to come, which is really tricky because I need all the things. I mean, uh, I could try and show some restraint, but where's the fun in that? So anybody who wants to buy me a Christmas present, check it out. Back into advert mode. As well as the Etsy shop, you can check them out on social media. So like Sarah dot handmade gifts on Facebook and at so dot like Sarah on Instagram. That's so spelt S E W. Order before the 14th of December for guaranteed delivery before Christmas. Now, from one beloved superfan to another, if you head to our Facebook page, you will find an amazing instrumental rock cover of our theme tune. Oh my goodness. The wonderful Pippa Beckford has honoured us with her skills and we are thrilled. It is so freaking awesome. Do yourself a favour and check it out. And why not subscribe to her YouTube channel while you are at it? Big love to you, Pippa, and thank you. And if you too want to cover our theme tune, to throw your fan theories at us, share your art, or even fancy advertising your business right here, you can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at No Small Roles, and on Facebook, simply search No Small Roles. 
Roll spelt R-O-L-L-S. As usual, please rate and review us on iTunes if you can. It really, really does help more wonderful listeners like yourselves find us. That's all from me for now. Let's get you back to the action. It is Orin's turn. <laughs> so it's sunny of this half-elf who's leapt in seemingly on our side. Orin is going to pull out his dragon from his back and he's going to stick the head on with the pebble that he took from Ruana's circle the protector mm-hmm. heads on and then uh, he's going to use his bonus action to fire it up and give everyone a little bit of temporary hit points including this half elf that's just wandered in because this half elf seems to be on our side so everyone is going to get 12 temporary hit points whoa Hellfire. That's, yes. a, that's a hefty. Yeah. Cheers, Does that mean you also recover hit points already lost? Nope, you don't recover any hit points lost. I'm afraid these are just temporary hit points. Okay, cool. But any extra damage that you take, it will take out the temporary hit points first. Got you. So yeah. It's like having yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's like a, it. like a little, a little shield, shield on top of your existing thing. Well, and having done that, he's just going to sort of shout at the figures. People? Things? People? They look like people. So if you, like with them all like masked up and like dark clothes, you can't quite tell like races and things like that. You're just like bandits. Okay. Criminals. Can he just shout at them, go away! <laughs> Leave us alone! Yeah. I don't know. It is Gwendolyn's turn. I'm really not in the mood for this. And she tries to pull her spear back out of his leg. Can that be a bonus action or is that an action? I'll let you have that as a free action. Okay, she pulls the spear out. Just like, pick it up, yeah. <laughs> She's just going to hit him in the head with it instead of like, just like, bugger off sort of thing. <laughs> so she's not even using it properly. She's not properly awake. She's not happy. <laughs> and that's a natural one. Oh. Oh. She's even less no. happy now. No! Uh, so um. do you still add stuff to your natural? No, you don't, do you? No, natural one's a miss. Yep. Very much what I will say, maybe with the natural one, because she's sort of like swung it loosely, that it's just slightly slipped out of her hand again. So it's not, <laughs> it's not hit anyone. It's just like fallen over to a tree at the side. And she's like, yeah, it's not going well for Gwendolyn. Fine. And then she's got a bonus action. Yeah. So she's just going to punch him in the face. And that is a 13. 13 hits. Good. Oh. <laughs> And that's gonna be five points of damage. Points of damage, no. Nice. Just get out of here. <laughs> but she's really <laughs> just half arsing it right now. Just, uh, uh, oh, just don't even. It comes round to their turn again. And all of them are gonna start trying to grab you and like pin you down. So, the first one, Juna, can you make a contested strength check, please? Yep. <laughs> My strength so bad. Unnatural 20. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, essentially where uh, where you've got like your hand around She's its neck. She's buoyed up by this young boy in front of her. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, like scary. he tries to like push you down, but you're just like, no, I've got you by the neck. Shut up. <laughs> the crossbow guy is going to try and grab you, Deacon. Uh, so can you make, make, make a strength check as well? Sure. Seven. <laughs> Seven. Um, so as you've like whacked him you're, and you're celebrating like, yeah, look, I did it. Uh, like his hands just come up like under your armpits to like <laughs> pin you to him. So he's like got you by by the shoulders. The guy in front of you, Gwendolyn, can you make a strength check as well? Yes. Is it strength saving throw? No, it's like a, an athletics check. Okay, yeah. Or an acrobatics, depending on if you've got Oh, I'm going to use my acrobatics if I'm allowed. Sure. Because um, that makes my 10 into a 15. Ooh. Oh, amazing. Hey. Uh, in which case, yeah, you can see that this guy is also like lunging for you to try and like knock you down, but you just step out of the way. Nice. <laughs> in a very slick, slick manner. Even half asleep, Gwendolyn's still slick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy in front of Enkidu, I'm not even going to make you roll that because he rolled a natural one. Hey. So <laughs> Enkidu is safe. And then Orin, uh, again, another contested grapple check. Nine. Nine. Uh, so he, again, uh, manages to, to grab hold of you. Ow! Just in that brief moment that you're, like, setting up your dragon and directing it, um, he sort of comes comes behind you and, like, knocks you to the ground. So he's almost, like, tackled you to the ground. Yeah, I think it's easily done with Orin. Yeah. <laughs> Which just leaves the other crossbow guy who, again, tries to fire at Orin, but the bolt, having just been tackled to the ground, goes flying over your head. <laughs> 
Teamwork. Come yeah. on, enemies. Teamwork. <laughs> and it is back up to Juno. The guy in front of me, he's still there, right? He just yes. tried to get off the grasp and didn't, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think, genuinely, I've got to deal with the guy in front of me. I'm going to go for him with my quarter star, which is a bit of a Junoism. But as I do it, I'm going to cast one of my new cantrips. Um, green yeah. flame blade. Oh. So the idea is that she, the, the guy she's got by the scruff of the neck, she's gonna sort of try and like sort of bonk him on the head with the end of her quarter star, mm-hmm. with the hope that green flame blade comes out of the amethyst in a sort of smoke-like way, a sort of twisty smoke-like way, to try and um, get the guy who's got. Uh, Deacon, who's in front of her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, roll your attack roll. He's near, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're within, like, 5, 10 feet. Lovely. So, oh dear. 12 to hit. 12 does not hit the oh, first guy, unfortunately. Man. Does uh, Green Flame Blade... Uh, I think uh, I have to hit on the first one for the second one to go ahead. Uh, as you're trying to channel this, like, fiery energy through your staff, yeah, the other guy sees, like, the glow at the end of your... Uh, end of your stick so he just like sort of dodges it just that just at the last yeah. minute she's still getting to grips with this new magic that's appearing in the stick mm-hmm. <laughs> not quite there yet have you got a bonus action or anything nah not for now uh, in which case Deacon it is your turn we're currently grappled good um <laughs> great so, so I hoped I would <laughs> yeah. so where I'm being held mm-hmm. am I able to do a reckless attack from there yeah um yeah you can absolutely still attack him um, not with any disadvantage. Wonderful. In that case, <laughs> he can reach down the side of his body, find his hand axe, and he's going to go whoop, straight behind him and bash him straight behind with the hand axe. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Make your attack roll. Get off my backpack. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my bloody backpack. Go away. <laughs> so that is 16. 16 hits, yeah. <laughs> that is... Six slashing damage. Six slashing damage, love. Got my attack bonus last time, I've just realised I've done that one. <laughs> but hey, well, when I'm it's fine. <laughs> it's very easily done, Sarah. It's very easily done. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the rule of this, of this show that you can't add any bonuses to that. So it's just straight rolls right the way through. Right? Exactly. No small rolls. <laughs> no bonuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this axe goes like over your shoulder into this other guy's head and you feel his grip instantly loosen and like just the body slump down behind you. Come on. <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah. First kill of the night. You're welcome. First blood. <laughs> uh, have you got a, a bonus action? Are you going to move anywhere else? Yes. Can I head over to the one with Juna? Because that yeah. one's still alive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not far at all. It's only a few steps away from you, so you like rush forward. Cool. I'll rush over to help Juna. Amazing. Uh, it is then Orin's turn. You are grappled on the ground. I'm grappled on the ground. And what is directly around me, please? Uh, so you're right next to your dragon. There is the, the person up on your back. Gwendolyn is in front of you, dealing with somebody of, of her own. To your right is Enkidu. You're, because you're all basically still where you were sleeping, you're actually really close to each other. So crossing off thunder wave of possible options. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm currently grappled, so I can attack him? You can still attack, you just can't move until you're okay. out of the grapple. Or else I could use my action to try and break out the grapple? That's right, yeah. Okay, I think I'm just going to reach over with my gloves of shocking grass and try and just sort of zap the one holding me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that didn't work. That's a 12. 12 misses, unfortunately, yeah. As you're just trying to get to the right angle, like, yeah, the, the glove goes off before you've, like, connected. No worries. Uh, it's just, it's just going to shout, to get off me! Cool, me done. It is Gwendolyn's turn. <sighs> right, does he still look like he's being aggressive towards me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's still lunging and things for you. For goodness sake, fine. If this is what you want, and she punches him in the face again. <laughs> Eight. Eight does not hit, unfortunately. <sighs> she misses, so she goes with her second attack, <laughs> and she's going to do flurry of blows. So she's going to spend a key point, so she's going to get just go to swipe him again twice. That one is a ten. Oh. And then... She's, she's still half asleep, so you've got to forgive her. I've got one more. Okay, that one is a 19 plus 5. Yeah. So, that's, so she's Way. gone, miss, miss, boof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Roll your damage. Okay. She's like, I know it's going to get him eventually. 
Okay, and that is um, six points of damage. Six points of damage, amazing. Yeah, and he sort of stumbles a little bit, having been clocked around. He was like, oh yeah, dodge, dodge, clock. It is now their turn. Crossbow guy, the second living one, is going to fire at Enkidu. And miss again. He's really not that good at his job. <laughs> He's a stormtrooper in a previous life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy in front of you, Gwendolyn, is going to try and swing for you with his short sword. And again, misses. That was well below 10, so I'm sure that has not hit you. As the, the guy in front of you, Enkidu, he's going to give up on trying to like tackle you down and he's just going to swing for you. That is a... 15 to hit. It hits. It hits. Damage. Oh, I get to roll damage. (laughs) Uh, That's five points of piercing damage as his little short sword just again grazes your arm. The guy in front of uh, Juna, noticing that Deacon is is backing up on him, he is going to roll an attack against Deacon and that is a 14 to hit. Oh, that's my armor class. That means I get hit. That does mean you take some damage, yeah. Uh, So you take seven points of piercing damage. Noticing you running forward, he just swings the sword wide uh, and gets you across the chest. And then the guy on top of Orin, trying to like keep you down, keep you grappled, like sort of pin you down and just say, "You don't, you don't, we don't have to hurt you. Just, just tell us where, where all the stuff, like anything valuable. Just tell us." And start grabbing for the, uh, the the glove that you've got on your hand. Just, just give it. Go on. Just, just get off. Give it. Get off me. Where, you, where are you keeping your gold? I don't have any. What? I don't have any. You feel like the, the like leaning on you, like loosen a little bit. But then, like, it just keeps going for your for your glove. I'm gonna try and make a sort of a contested strength check for that, if you could. Uh, Again, athletics or acrobatics, whoever I mean, you want. It makes no your hand It makes no one. Yeah. yeah. Eighteen. Oh yeah. Hello. Eighteen. Oh yeah. Yeah. You managed. Like, as you can see, that he's trying to get this glove off your hand. You just like pull it back, tuck it under you. My glove. I made that glove. It is Enkidu's turn. Well, there is a guy directly in front of me, so I will rip out the mm-hmm. scimitar and try to cut him with it. Nice scimitar. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, that's a 12. Just misses, unfortunately. We really shouldn't get attacked when we're sleeping. No. <laughs> it's awful. And are we work? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. Mm. Ignore that. About to ask if we sleep in our armor. Yes, I was. <laughs> well, you were still. Um, I was awake. Awake, and we were in. You were still awake. Anyway. We're in the woods. We're not comfortable. We're not going to be. Yeah. I mean, you weren't asleep for long. Yeah. Oh, I don't wear armor anyway, so fuck oh, you. Oh yeah. All. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. And Orin, it's just more like leather, like <laughs> clothes, right? For Orin. Yeah, it's basically. Does he a have a set of other clothes? Like, no. <laughs> it's just always in the armor. <laughs> I think so. Cool, so yeah, Enkidu, uh, you, yeah, that attack just misses, unfortunately. Do you have a bonus action or anything? Um, nothing that will hurt him, so... <laughs> I think I'm just going to stand my ground. Cool, in which case it is Juna's turn. So, Juna is going to look at the person in front of him and what he's just done to Deacon, and she's going to look him in the eye, and she is going to say, Leave my new friend alone! And cast <laughs> Word of Radiance. <laughs> Constitution saving throw, please. Constitution save. That is an 11 altogether. Ah, he fails, or she fails, or they fail. I haven't seen who they are yet. So they take six damage. Six points of damage. Nice. What kind of damage is that? It is... So I'm just like going through all my cantrips. Oh, so, <laughs> oh, so hard. It's so hard uh, having all those cantrips that Juna has. Radiant damage. I feel really bad. Radiant damage. Juna. I know. With my two cantrips. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, so Deacon, it is your turn. Okay, so I've uh, it's just been slashed across the chest. Mm-hmm. Not feeling too happy about that. And he just swipes his morning star, which he dropped when he's done it on the other one, and go, right you, come here. Swings it round, and in a rage, as a bonus action, yes! he swings his bonus star and smacks him while she's raging. As you feel the rage come into you, can you roll a d8? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> this mean? <gasps> Six. Wonderful. <laughs> Juno, you see this, but like the, the reaction draws everybody's focus. As Deacon becomes angry, suddenly see him surrounded by multicolored protective lights. Whoa. Little glimmering things that like just suddenly spill and like whir around him. So Deacon has plus one bonus to his AC. 
Oh, and whilst within 10 feet of you, your allies have the same bonus. Plus two. Yeah. So Juna's, within... Juna's within 10 feet, um, oh, and I'll say Enkidu just about hits as well. Oh, wow. Is that plus one armor oh. class, did you say? Plus one to your armor class, yeah. So yeah, these little oh. lights like come spiraling out of Deacon, and then like some of them like oh like start spiraling around each of you as well. But yeah, make your attack roll. Natural twenty. Oh, yeah. Yes, she gets the good roll. Yes, she does. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're gonna do it. <laughs> cool, roll your damage. Oh my goodness, I'm rolling well. <laughs> Eleven piercing damage. Oh my oh, god! Yes. Double, double uh, damage for a crit, isn't it? Doubled as well. Yeah. Double the dice. Oh, yeah. Sarah, did you charge your dice before you came on the show today? I mean, you did get from that. <laughs> wow! <laughs> the swing of this morning star like collides with this guy. It like nearly stops the entire fight because everyone's just like, what? <laughs> has happened but he goes like crumbling to one side slumped onto the floor definitely not moving anymore <sighs> out cold <laughs> it is Orin's turn okay so Orin's is sort of like struggling on the floor with this guy who's trying to get his glove off his hand and just, 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 ah, just go away <laughs> don't know, we don't have any money or anything that you just ah. he's just gonna flail around and try and hit him with his little hammer cool cool he's going for like his hand Try and whack his hand away with the hammer, if you may, mm-hmm. rather than anything particularly gruesome. Uh, 15 to hit. 15 does hit, yeah. Yeah. Six points of hammer damage. I don't know. Hammer damage. Piercing. Amazing. Uh, no, short bear, that's not right. I'm assuming bludgeoning. Yeah. As he's like trying to reach around to like grab the glove off of you, you get this hammer down on the back of his hand and you're fairly sure there's like a crunch of bone and he yelps, sort of draws his hand back. Uh, are you doing anything else? I think he's just being like, go away! <laughs> <laughs> Rich case, Gwendolyn, it's your turn. So she's just boofed him. They're looking a little bit out of it. So she's going to try and push them down to the ground and pin them down. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I do that. <laughs> so it's a uh, contested strength check. You roll strength and they'll roll athletics or acrobatics. Okay. My strength, that's a 12. Mm-hmm. Well, they only rolled 10. Oh, so. Ooh. So yeah, you shove him to the ground. Basically trying to sit on him and pin him down. Cool. And if he's struggling too much, she's going to punch him in the head again <laughs> with my bonus action. Cool. He is, he is he struggling. Is. Okay. So yeah, bonus if you want to... Wanna... Yeah, it's a natural one. I miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as you're sort of like so concerned with getting him down, he's flailing about just that little bit too much. So. Yeah, I punch onto the floor a bit, graze my hand, just like... Ah! <laughs> oh, it's a graze. <laughs> 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 cool, it is their turn. Um, the guy under you, Gwendolyn, um, is going to try and get up, first of all. So Don't get make up. Another, <laughs> make another grapple check. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I use my acrobatics this time, though? Yes. That is 13. Roll is 16. Oh, wow. Oh. Sorry, so yeah, he um, like rolls out from under you, jumps up. However, the guy on top of Orin at the time is just like... Ah! 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 Uh, t- uh. Do any of you have any money? Uh, no. No. Fuck. Why would we be sleeping oh. in the woods if we had money? Let's go. Let's go. And he starts shouting out to the others, and all four of them start darting off back into the woods. The guy with the crossbow has gone very quickly. The guy in front of Enkidu just takes a turn and starts running. The guy who's gotten out from under Gwendolyn starts rushing away as well. Uh, and the guy on Orin's back leaps up, looks over at his dead friends, and glowing Deacon in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and, like starts running away if uh, Orin and Kidu or Gwendolyn want to make opportunity attacks you can do as they are retreating uh, yeah Gwendolyn's just gonna like try and like swipe because she's like kind of on the floor still so she's gonna just like try and swipe her legs around <laughs> just to trip him up just to be spiteful <laughs> <laughs> amazing make, a, make a, an attack roll that is a 14 14 does hit so he does trip and stumble amazing as he like sort of gets himself back up again, though, he just then dashes off. Ow. <laughs> uh, with Warcast, though, I can um, cast the spell as a reaction. Can I Eldritch Blast him as he runs off? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm aiming, so I'm aiming for his arsehole with my Eldritch Blast. Hopefully this will be a nice sting on, a, on his way home. Which guy? The guy that was in front of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a 23 to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 23 hits. Roll your damage. <laughs> That's a full-on 13 points of damage. <laughs> Right in his arms. <laughs> yeah. There is a massive yelp and he is limping away afterwards <laughs> into the darkness. He is not going to be able to sit down for a really long time. No. Is he? Mm. he won't forget that in a hurry. Mm. Nope. Yeah, you made your choice. 
dumb bastards. I think I'm going to turn to Deacon and be like, Whoa! Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I just, uh, the twinkle's gone away yet. They go away when your rage ends. So whilst you're still, like, ready to go, oh. the, the, the glowing things are still around. He but... has disco rage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're apologising for. You just jumped out of absolutely nowhere. Did you not see? See this young fella jump out? Not really. I turned what? around and they with were there. us. Gave us a lovely light show. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That'll that'll go away in a minute. Yeah. Well, um, well, I just saw what they were up to, and I thought I got to follow them because they were talking about this place that I want to go to. And the next thing I know, I see them jump you, poor buggers. So I thought, well, I better give them hand. So. Here we are. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Right, yeah. Do you say they get, they're going to the same place that you're going? Well, they, they mentioned it is more what they did. So I thought... Where, it, where are you on your way to? I'm trying to find... I've got to get this right. The Berrien Fields, I think it's called. What? Berrien Fields? Yeah, that's right. Gwendolyn gets out her map and goes, Oh, can, can you show it? Do you know where it is on here? Oh, that's a pretty lot of pictures. What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you absol- you've never seen a map before, friend? Well, not really, no. We don't really do maps where I am. It's just not really. But I've heard of like, place names and stuff. I tend to have a bit of an idea. But oh, Well, yes, there, there are some place names on here. Um, Good stuff. Can Gwendolyn see it on her map, this place? It is marked on the map, but it's um, like one of the smaller, smaller towns. Berry and Fields is uh, it's more like a little area, mm. like along the main road. But like the actual like village centre of it, you can see is, is is much smaller marked on the map. Yes, I, I can just about see it here. I think is it on the way to where we're going? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. It's in the same path. Oh yes, Lovely. it's actually um along the same path that we're going where we're travelling. Oh, brilliant! Is it far? DM, is it far? <laughs> <laughs> no, you reckon actually um yeah. for for you guys uh, in the same direction that you were travelling anyway, it's probably about a day's journey if that. All oh, right. Oh, right. oh. And uh, where are you from? Oh, well, um, well, I'm from the Woden Isles, you see. Oh, Orin, do you hear that? <laughs> what? Yeah, I did. Oh, Orin, are you from the Woden Isles? Is that where you're from? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing, yeah. whereabouts? Uh, from Calton Sea. No, get out. That's where I'm from. Oh, what, is, what a coincidence. Isn't it? Yeah, that is a coincidence madness when did what? when did you leave oh, not that long ago and only only fairly recently actually same here um, a couple of months ago cool what how did how what did brought I... you off the woden isles oh well um I... see i've got this well i've got a got a bit of a quest really that i'm doing and oh, it's it's a bit of a grand mission really and um well uh i need to get to the north i believe you see i'm going to be a great warrior and to be that, I need to go and find my, my mentor, who's very important, that I've heard all about, called uh, Silith Valia. You must have heard of him. He's amazing. No? Anyone? DM, have I heard of Silith Valia? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> or in the shakes oh. <laughs> That sounded no, so familiar. Dissociate. I was like, definitely heard that name. <laughs> but, oh, well, Silith Valia is like the most amazing warrior there's ever been. So I'm going to go and find him and I'm going to train under him and I'm going to be a true warrior. That's that's what I'm doing. So, so yeah. Well, you've done a very wow. good job of being just that today. You were heroic. You were strong. You were oh. on the right side. So, sorry, did you tell us your name or have I forgotten it, young <gasps> lad? Oh, Fireheart. 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 Well, that's an amazing name. Fireheart. That's that... well, that's going to be my warrior name anyway. My, I my, so. my real name is Deacon, but um, oh. but Fireheart is is going to be my warrior name. So I'm trying to give it a go when I meet people. Is that what you'd like us to call you? I'll answer to either. To be honest, it's always just <laughs> nice to meet people. This is great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you are adorable. Oh, I'm not sure the warriors <laughs> should be called adorable, but thanks. No, that's true. That's true. I won't call you that again, but. I like your gumption. Well, friend, you seem to know how to handle yourself pretty well and you've helped us out of a jam. I'm good at that. I do try. I've been working ever so hard. I've been doing all my all my workouts, all my strength training. I've been really focused. I've really, really worked on this warrior. I've got to be ready when I meet him, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. How did you hear about him, silly? Val, 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 Well, like, so, bit of a mixture of stuff, really. So, my dad told me some stuff about him. 
well, it's just amazing when he told me the things that he'd done. I was like, oh, it just sounds so incredible. And he didn't really have much information. And then some of the prisoners who come down to the Woden Isles, when I asked them about him, they knew bits and bobs. So I kind of pieced a few bits together, which is why I need to find him because I don't really get all of it, <laughs> or if I'm honest. So you feel like it's your destiny? Yeah, it's my destiny. Amazing. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? And how far north are you going? Do you have an actual destination in time? Is it just vaguely north? If, okay, well, if I'm honest, I don't really know. I've got, I've got a compass. Well, I had a compass that I've lost, and that's why I'm trying to get to this burying fields thing, because if I've got the compass, then I can work out how to get there that makes sense um, the stuff on the compass to do with the compass is from oh do you know what i can't really explain it very well but if i can get the compass i know i can get where i'm going what, is it a what, special like, compass or just yeah. a normal compass i don't know i've never seen another one so i think it's just an ordinary one what's it do tells you what direction to go in <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding me well you can tell what it's it's night time isn't it uh yeah <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if this world is similar to ours, if it has like a North Star or anything of that equivalent. Uh, yeah, it would have an equivalent. Well, if you look up, just see that big star up there? Yeah. That way's North. Well, that's all very well, but what happens when you want to go Southeast? You just kind of just go <laughs> the other way. No, I'm not sure about that. Does your compass just point one way or does it change <laughs> direction? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> It changes directions. That's weird. Of course it changes directions. But like it changes, it always points, it always points north or? No, I know where I need to end up is the north, but you turn the thing and it guides you where you've got to go. What? Honestly, it's really obvious when you use it. So it, it guides you, it guides you to different places at different times. No, I think it only leads me to the warrior. How can you be sure? I mean, not to be patronising, friend, but... You turn with a compass to verify which direction you're facing. So how do you turn the compass to determine where you're going? That, that seems to be confusing me. Okay. Well, I realise this would be much easier if I could just show you because I don't have it. But if you hold the compass, it will show you where the, war- the, the guidance to the warrior is going to be because it will always point the way you've got to go at that point. So it always shows you your path? Yeah. I think that makes absolute perfect sense. Thank you. I'm glad someone's paying attention. I'm tired. Um, nice. Someone want to take over watch? <laughs> I, I really need to go to bed. I've got this crossbow bolt. And... Oh, you're all right, love. Go and have a lie down. You'll be all right. <laughs> I'm okay where I am, friend. Thank you. So we've got a magic compass you want to find. If it's magic, Grace, I don't know. But yes, I've got a compass I need to find. That's the upshot, because once I find the compass, I can find my, my warrior leader. Sorry, just... So you think you're going to find the compass at Burying Fields, or you're going to find directions at Burying Fields? No, I'll, I'll, well... If the guy I heard is to be believed, then the compass is at Berrien Fields. But so you've never had the compass? <laughs> oh, no, I have had the compass. Okay, all right. Let me give you a bit more of a backstory. So I've come over from the Woden Isles. I had the compass. Yeah. I had the compass with me on the boat. The boat got raided and they took me blooming compass along with everything else. Oh. There was nothing to do with me. The compass was taken by accident and I found out... From the guy I was chatting to, that the person who's taking it is going to bury in fields. I probably should have explained that at the beginning, shouldn't I? Thank oh, well. you. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that makes sense you know now you've told there, us that. Like... <laughs> so confused. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't God. know. I think it's clear. I don't know what you lot are <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe it was clear if we'd been like on the boat with you or we'd seen the compass or you'd explained it to us before. But otherwise, I just found it a little unclear. Well, we're heading that way, so... It's on the map. I guess if you want to... Wicked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean... Looks could like you come use... with us? I'd love to. It looks like you could do with an extra set of hands anyway, if anything, uh, untoward We could. Kicks we did have an extra set of hands. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, you... You haven't seen a half elf on a horse recently, have you? <laughs> uh, well, no. The only people I came across was them buggers back there. Oh God! I hope they don't find him and Bessie. I don't think they will. They, I mean, they weren't much trouble by the end of it, were they? They looked a bit shell shocked. So not as shocked as I was when I was in the first place. Uh, besides, he didn't have any money. Yeah. Do you know what they wanted? Were they just? Were they? They were just trying to get money. From yeah. Us? They were just what, opportun- what did you overhear? Yeah, they're just opportunists. So I stopped because they were talking about going to bury in fields. They actually caught me. Uh, <clears throat> making myself comfortable behind a tree, which is why they didn't know I was there. So oh. they were having a chat about going on to Berrien Fields and then they started moving along. So I 
quietly went behind them and then they started saying, oh, they got no money. So if they found anyone, they were going to try and get some. And then I'd stop to sort myself out. The next thing I know, they've slightly disappeared. When I move a bit further forward, they're belting seven shades out of you guys. Well, I don't know if they were doing that, but I mean, yeah. Here's a thought, friend. Do they know about the, uh, your magical compass? No, I don't think so. There was something to do with, uh, oh, I can't remember, something to do with the, some taxes or they're trying to rob something. I, to be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. I just heard the words and thought, that'll do. <laughs> Are they Robin Hood? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's no danger that these uh, these run-off-the-mill bandits are going to find your compass first and, you know, make off with it. I don't see why they know what it was, no. Yeah, it seems quite hard to explain what it is, so I don't imagine they do. No, probably not. I mean, they might be after the rest of the cargo. <laughs> yeah. Or in. Did you what? just uh, take on a bit of Deacon's accent there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think I did. Just because we come from the same place doesn't mean we sound the same <laughs> way. <laughs> I don't know. The rest of the cargo, what were you, sorry, you're about to say something. The, what, unless they saw the rest of the cargo, what? Uh, well, uh, well, ooh, that's, ooh, that's a bit more of an awkward story, if I'm honest. Why don't I make you a nice cup of Twain Tide and you explain it to us? Oh, that sounds fun. What's that? It's a it's a, a Tillisham tea. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah go on, I love it. It's very nice. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I start I start making a Twain Tide. Sit Deacon down in your own time. Oh, that's very <laughs> nice. Thanks very much. Well, Irene, I don't know how you got over from the Woden Isles because it's not easy, is it? Let's be honest. They mm, no. cargo goes one way as far as that place is concerned. But yeah. um. That's true. So I thought I got myself this really good job, basically. Doing There's a bit- your tea. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, that's nice and hot. Oh, nice smell to it. I like that. So I thought I got myself this really good gig where I was going to be doing some trade over to the mainland. I thought that'd be great. Gets me out of the way. Not a good way over. All above board and all that kind of stuff. Everything was going really well. They were a lovely bunch of a big bunch of guys. I won't lie. Quite burly. Fine, I can understand. Rough waters, it's quite cold, it's fine. When we got into the port, it turns out things were not quite as I thought. And we got pulled to one side and this this bloke, um, Alex, uh, Alec Ludder, I think they said his name was, he came on, he started checking all the cargo. Now, as far as I'm concerned, everything that comes in when it comes to the water Isles gets checked, makes sense to me. <laughs> Mm, lovely tea. Um, <laughs> so I'm thinking this is all okay. All of the guys are looking a bit nervous. Don't know why. Next thing I know, this guy is buggering off for the entire cargo, including one of my bags. What? So what I thought was going to be just a bunch of like, actually, I don't know what I thought we were transporting. But anyway, turns out they were <laughs> transporting this stuff called frosting. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's basically... It's a naughty drug. Well, I didn't know this, did I? So I thought we're just bringing something good over. Turns out these guys are a bunch of bleeding bandits. So I have to find out all the details, why they've taken everything. Well, when they tell me, I had to make haste. Woof, straight out of there I was. So next thing I know, I've got my backpack, but I've lost my compass because it's got taken with all the frosting. And I've got to try and make me way to find me way to my compass. So where are you, where are you finding frosting? You might find the compass. Exactly that. So he said ah. that it was taken by this guy, Alec Ludder, and it was going to Berren Fields. He did ask me to get involved with his enterprise, but I managed to give him the slip. So uh, <laughs> so I went to the nearest pub and worked out how to get here from there. And I've been doing okay so far, I think. Right. I think. I've just basically been bouncing from person to person. I've seen quite a few bandits, so I hope you guys have been careful. There's been a lot of fights on my way. It's very weird. Very weird. Hmm. This, this uh, Alec, was it? Alec Ludder? Mm-hmm. So he was on the mainland, yeah? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he look official or what? Or did he look like... To be honest, I didn't really see him properly. I just saw the, uh, the announcement and getting all of us off because they were going to go and check the, the cargo. So this hmm. sort of group went on. I don't know which one he was. I just know that he was part oh. of it and he was the head... Head of that, I don't know, like a, I don't know, maybe it'd be like a, a drug squad. <laughs> Shot in the dark DM. <laughs> mm. With my background feet, would I have heard whispers of Alec Luder? Make a history check. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Uh, no. No, you haven't, unfortunately. <laughs> have any of us heard of frosting before, yeah. just out of interest? <laughs> I would like to ask mm. the same question. Again, everyone everyone, make a history check for frosting. I 
feel like Gwen's a bit too sheltered to know about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can't I imagine. I did just roll a natural 20. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. Um, I rolled an 18. 11. 21 for me. 11 for Inky. What did, what did you roll, Orin? 21. 21. So... Orin, yes, definitely. Um, having grown up on the Woden Isles, you are aware of frosting. Frosting is like a white powdered drug that when mixed into food and things, people become very relaxed and they become very easily swayed <laughs> is the thing. So if you want to convince someone to do something, maybe ah. like spike them with a bit of frosting first because they're more like, oh, sure, I'm up for anything. Mm. It's not so much an addictive drug as it is like a persuasive drug. Mm. Gwendolyn, interestingly, yes, you have heard of it as well. From... Uh, is it she just confused about cake frosting? <laughs> <laughs> or at least she has a weird flashback to a book she's read that had mentioned frosting. <laughs> and she'd always assumed that that meant <laughs> cake. <laughs> so she'd been reading this little like fairy tale story being like, ah, oh, they're all eating cake and getting really relaxed around each other sure <laughs> that's how i feel around cake i imagine juna has potentially dabbled in her younger days oh mate yeah and, <laughs> and maybe said to gwen oh that night <laughs> we did a lot of frosting that night and, and gwendolyn's yeah. grown up thinking that it was yeah. just lots of cake yeah she's exactly just and until like... this very moment gwendolyn has never thought there was anything untoward about that Amazing. you're like of course this is like the first time i saw les mis and they kept talking about tarts and i was like oh <laughs> was this last year yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god oh when we went to theatre oh, oh, yes. back, back so, sorry that didn't endanger our yeah, lives yes. <laughs> um, so yeah like between you all you do have an idea of what frosting is oh. and Kidu weirdly doesn't out of everyone, which considering his background, you would have thought. Mm. So the idea that, that Deacon has come over on a shipment of it is and, and wasn't aware is both hilarious but also incredibly worrying for you all. Yeah. <laughs> Deacon. Hi. Um or uh, Fireheart. Oh, I like that, yeah, go on. <laughs> so what did you do on the Woden Isles, if you don't mind my asking? Well, not a lot really, because I mean <laughs> I'm only 17, so, you know, <laughs> oh, wow. didn't have a chance to get up to too much. But um, both of my parents are kind of involved in like, I don't know how you describe it. I suppose you describe it as like a local council type thing. Mm. So my dad came over originally, I think, as a prisoner, if, if I understand the, the stuff correctly. They've been sort of trying to transform the area a little bit. So I'll be honest, they just got really involved with that. So they didn't really care what I was up to too much. So when I started being able to sort of ask around a little bit more than, yeah, I just, well, I guess what I've really been focused on is once, once I'd heard about Valia, I was like, well, that's it. That's what I want to do. So I suppose that's always been, been a bit of my mission, really. It's a bit of my goal, a bit of my dream. What about well, you, Warren? We've never heard what you did on the Woden Isles. Uh, what you got up to? Yeah, I worked in farming. What did you do? Farm ice? Wow, that's a toughie. No. Oh. No, 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 no. Like food. In the ice? Well, not like <laughs> directly in the ice. No. Have you ever seen the the, the greenhouses? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I've never really given it much thought to where the food came from, I guess. I just, ice is a big thing, so I guess. Well, yeah, I know ice is a big thing, yeah. It's got to be a bit tough being a farmer on the Woden Isles, blimey. No wonder you left. Yeah, yeah. I guess I wasn't directly a farmer as such, but. Like, I helped the farmers. What did you do? What did you give them um, seeds and stuff? Well, we kind of like arcane agricultural assistance, I guess. Hmm. Magical food. Oh. Well, not magical food. No, I mean, the food's normal. Oh. But like, as you say, like, there's an awful lot of ice, isn't there? It's not really the most oh. hospitable of places to grow food. So it, it needs a bit of needs a bit of help. GM. To grow. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we prefer AM. Yeah, that Arcane, makes sense, doesn't it? Arcane modified. Arcane modified. Arcane modified. Arcane modified. <laughs> that makes more sense, yes, that's true. So, did you ever deal with gnomes up there? Oh, I've never seen a gnome. Uh, don't, just wondered. Don't think so, anyway. You just get, I mean, there's a lot of prisoners around, right, in there? There's a lot of people that get chucked yeah. down there. A lot of people really don't like it, and they get really grumpy about it. Yeah, that's true. Juna, do you know a gnome down there? No, it's just I don't know gnomes work in spells trades. Um. Yeah, I knew a gnome down there. Ooh. Up in the Woden Isles. Yeah, down, I guess. 
I mean, I guess depending on how you're looking at the the <laughs> compass that Fireheart had. <laughs> the compass is upside down. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I thought you guys were friends. Have you never had this conversation? A lot has well, happened since we've met each other, hasn't it, Orin? We only met about five days ago. Oh, yeah. I think. Oh, I think. Yes. That's exciting. Longer. Seven days ago? Nine days ago, Less four days that. ago. About a week. <laughs> about a week ago. We only met about a week ago. <laughs> and you said I was confused. It just never came up. We could do with knowing a bit more about each other. So it was fun to find out, yeah. I think. Yeah, I knew a name. What was their name? Oh, it's lovely knowing about other gnomes. It's like being back with Jenny again. <laughs> <laughs> Elliewick. Was Elliewick. her name? Elliewick. DM, have I ever heard of this gnome? No, unfortunately not. Elliewick is a fairly common gnomish name. Cool. Not that I should just because they're a gnome. <laughs> just because they're a gnome. <laughs> The name Elliwick, you're aware of, but you get the impression that actually this is not a gnome that you know. Okay. Unknown gnome. Un- unknown. Mm. Unknown. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we should probably get a little bit of rest if we're going to travel tomorrow. I don't think there's a lot of night left, but you might as well. I feel pretty awake now, to be honest. <laughs> Woken me right up. I feel completely pooped. <laughs> oh, okay. You haven't well, had any yeah. rest, have you yet, Juna? No. No, you and Enkidu should have a nap at least. I'm happy to keep watch. Yeah, me too. Deacon, do you... Oh, I'll stay awake, don't don't you worry about me. I was having a bit of a rest when they came. I came across them guys. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'll sit up as well. Don't you worry. Miss Epthorn. Yes? I think I'd like a twain tide before bed. <laughs> Juna beams. <laughs> She's very nice. And she makes a round of twain tide. Thank you. So as sort of you're sort of swapping over the watch, the topic of the two bodies that mm. of, the, of the bandits. Yeah. That's still very much just there comes up. Uh, what are your plans for those? Search your pockets. That's what Guy would do if he were here. Well, Deacon has this brilliant idea that he'll pick them up and he'll take them off, but actually is not quite strong enough to do that on his own. <laughs> so he do with a little bit of a help. <laughs> Anyone? Uh, All right. I don't mind doing this before going to bed, but still yeah. would like to see what's in their pockets. Yeah. So yeah, the two of you just take a little bit of time to sort of move the bodies far enough away that should any animals be attracted to them in the night that it's not going to bother any of you. Can you both make investigation checks off the pockets as well? 10. 16. Yeah, between the two of you, obviously, uh, one of them's got a crossbow with some bolts, about six bolts in a small pouch um, that you could take. The other one's got a short sword. Between the two of them, there's about 22 gold pieces. The other interesting thing that you find, uh, Deacon, you notice it first, is that as you sort of go through the pockets of one of them, you take your hand axe out of his face as well. <laughs> you do notice that just branded halfway down his neck, almost like a little tattoo, is a hexagon symbol. Oh, man. And at the same time, Enkidu, you find a little note in the other one's pocket that reads, Target is staying at the Merry Prince, make an example of him. And that too is signed with a little hexagon. And the Merry Prince, was that? Mm-hmm. Is this who Enkidu thinks it is? The, the symbol. Now who does Enkidu think it is? The same people he had a slight run in before everything kicked off for him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's those people. Okay. Deacon's going to nudge Enkidu to the guy that he's with and sort of show him the symbol. Mm. I think you might want to take a look at this, mate. That's not a good symbol. Shit, it is not. I don't know much about these guys, but I know they're not good. I had a bit of a run in with them in the past. Wow. Yeah. They're mainly, well, in my experience, they're only interested in magical shit, stuff that can advance them. But um, I didn't think they'd use dumb pricks like this to get their work done. I don't know much about them. I just know they're not good. No, they're assassins. The Merry Prince, does that sound like an inn to you? Sounds like a pub. Yeah, it does sound like a pub or an inn or something like that. Yeah. Might be on the way if they if we ran into him here. Well, they went away in the direction, continuing the way I was going. If you say that's the way that we're supposed to go, then... Yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? I suppose. Well, that's a bit weird, isn't it? It is a bit weird. Assassins. I thought they were just normal, just normal bandits. You know, a bit useless, a bit, a bit shit. But you know, just bandits. I didn't think they were assassins. Yeah, I'd always assume that. I mean, you say the word assassin, they sound like they should be amazing. These guys were not amazing. No, they weren't. Well, that's how they work, though, don't they? They don't. The big guns never come out themselves. They always get poor losers off the street to do their dirty work for them. This sounds more like hired thugs, though, doesn't it? Yeah. I have to say, though, I'll have his sword. That'll be very useful. Tar. Oh, mate, help yourself. Thanks. Crossbow. Mm, don't know how good I am with a crossbow, to be honest. Could give it a shot. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a bit of money here as well. Hey, look, 22 gold pieces. You should share that amongst you. Oh, absolutely. It's more money than we've seen in a while. I've got some money, so. Very kind of you. Give that to everyone. Do we think. Like, you know your mates very well. Do you think you should tell him about this? 
Yeah. Yeah. I have to. Okie dokie. Meant to say to you earlier, I saw that scimitar. Very cool. I like that. Oh, Tar. Thank you. You've got a, got a few more I can just pull out. Have you? Amazing. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of hard to kind of control, but yeah, there, there are others I've keep uh, well hidden. Ooh. I look forward to this. I could learn something from you. All right. And I look around. And I'm like, all right, check this out. <laughs> I'm going to do the roulette. <laughs> cool. Roll a D6. <laughs> it's a one. <laughs> one. Uh, I think one is just the scimitar. Yeah, yeah. It? <laughs> so, <laughs> and I just bounce it from Look, what the other sheath to my hand. Pull out. <laughs> like, Way, and magic it's, trick. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not there and then it suddenly appears in his hand, but it is just the same scimitar. Mm. Wow. So scimitar. you don't even have to get it out. It just like <laughs> pops out. No, wow. but watch this. And I try again because there doesn't seem to be a limit on how much I can do it. Please roll No, one. yeah, roll another D6. This one's a six. As you sort of concentrate again, this time in like a, a white light almost. Yeah. Comes out and there's a, sh- a small short sword. Check this out. That is really cool. So you don't have to yeah. carry them. They just like pop out whenever you want them. Yeah, I mean, one of them I have to carry, but um, the others, no, I don't have to. Like you just saw, it's a kind of hit and miss, but I'm guaranteed to get something that's good. Very cool. How many have you got all together, did you say? Well, I've got, uh, I've got six. And cl- I've got six. Six. Nice. Yeah. Well, you're going to be very useful next time we have to kick some butt. Yeah, better than tonight, hopefully. <laughs> hey, look, we all have our off days, love. We all have our off days. Uh, don't we all? <laughs> right. I think we better break the news to the others. Yeah, let's make sure these buggers are covered up. We don't want anyone else finding them. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you take some time to, like, disguise the bodies enough with some, like, underbrush and that and then return to the, to the rest of them. And uh, June has fallen asleep by Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Gwendolyn and Orin are sort of half awake mm. each, keeping an eye on their surroundings. Sure. And maybe we should save what we discovered to the morning. Better condition to hear it. Yeah, I think so. You don't want to give anyone the jitters before they go to sleep. Nah. That's all right. They ain't waking up, are they? So. Oh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Well, we've had uh, recent experiences where, you know what? It's fine. Let's just go to bed. <laughs> you know, let's just go to bed. It's fine. Deacon's just looking around like, what the? <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. You, you don't worry about it. We'll be all right. All right. So and Kidu finishes his tea, lays down and goes to bed. Orin, Gwendolyn and Deacon are left awake. Are you doing anything during your watch, the three of you? Deacon's going to do a few press-ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and quite like a quick word with Gwen, if you may. Yeah. Yeah, Gwendolyn's just kind of staring out into the woods and she's just... Yeah, she's just feeling numb. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry about the sock puppet thing. I, I know it's silly, but I just... I wanted a way to try and talk to people and I thought maybe sharing part of myself would be a good idea, but apparently I just always get shot down straight away anyway, so what's the point? Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not very good at, I don't know, that kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. But it, it's a good idea. And I guess, I don't know, I don't have a sock puppet, but I guess I, I talk to my machines sometimes, a bit like that. You do? Yeah. What do you tell them? Oh, I don't know. I just talk. I don't know. I just chat away to them sometimes. <laughs> they don't talk back. At least I haven't built one that talks back yet. <laughs> Maybe I should. I-, I bet you could. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'd do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're very talented. Oh, thanks. You remind me of my my father and my sister. They they have very similar talents to you. Really? Yeah. You said. Well, you said your sister had given you the sock puppet. Yeah, she made it when we were little. and I I found it really difficult to express my feelings and things that were worrying me. So instead of me kicking things and punching things and screaming lots, it was something that she gave me to to help me talk things out. And, and I just, that's why I, I wanted to share it with you all. So would you, would you just use it or would you, or would, her, would your sister use it? Prim. Well, it? it was kind of she made it as a gift for me. For she's a, she's a little bit older than me, and she was often studying and working hard, and she couldn't spend as much time with me. I I spent a lot of time by myself, and but it was a way of kind of her way of showing me that she cared, even if she didn't have the time for me all the time. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll hear you on spending a lot of time by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you still get on with her? At this point, I really don't know. I've, I've kind of disappointed my family. Um, I, I ran away from my wedding, <laughs> and 
and um, with Dwayne and my family were very much relying on me marrying Colin <laughs> was his name. Colin. Colin DeBarge. <laughs> oh. Reminded me somewhat of um, Trimped, kind of full of himself, uh, but huh. not much else going on. Like nobility and all of that. Yes, just very rich and very self-absorbed and that's not really what I like. Uh, I needed a way to escape and... No, I can understand that. Dwayne, Dwayne was a way of escaping, but I, I'm not sure if I can go home, so... I can't go home. I don't feel comfortable here. I I don't know. But you said your mum is in Orkosh. I think... I've never met her. Not my birth mother. Um, I have many mother-like figures in my life. Oh. The, the mother of my, um, my younger brother. She's been a mentor and a, a stepmother to me and... I, I really think I've messed things up with her as well, so... So you've got a younger brother too, and like, more siblings? Uh, just a brother and a sister, as far as I know. I, wow. Gosh, I don't know if my mother ever had any other children. That's, that's something I haven't even... What about you? Any sibling? No. Well, not that I know about. Hmm. Thank you for talking to me, Warren. I'm that's what I sorry, I'm not very good at it. And I'll probably screw this up. Oh I don't know. If you ever want to borrow gubbins, just by yourself, you'd be very welcome to. Thanks. You're welcome. And that's where we'll leave tonight's episode. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Thanks, Oren. Oren's bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> he tries though, and that's Dude. what matters. You can see him getting more and more awkward as Gwendolyn's like, I just need to talk to someone, and he's like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have been listening to David Knight as your dungeon master, Ben Galpin as Orin, Chris Watts as Gaius, Daryl Bailey as Enkidu. Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn and Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe and follow us on all the social media. <laughs>